Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and today we're going to talk motherboards, upgrades, and overclocking. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so in today's video, we're going to be discussing motherboard possibilities, overclocking, what CPUs work best with what boards, and what you should do when you're thinking of upgrading, things to look out for, and all that kind of stuff. And this is all related to the AMD AM4 platform. Now, if you've been directed to this video from another one of my videos, and I've linked it, then there's a good reason for this. This is because we're gonna go into detail of what boards can overclock, which ones can't, which ones have limited capabilities, and all those kinds of things. Now, some of the items I've got here on the desk are for reference purposes only, and to try and illustrate what I'm trying to tell you. Obviously, you can swap and change these parts out for other parts. We will be linking some in the video description so you can see other suitable solutions, which I think would be good for you. So with that said, let's get straight into it. So the first question that I'm gonna try and answer is one that I get very, very frequently, especially on the A320 based chipset boards, which I've done quite a few reviews of. And people ask the same question. Will this board be okay for overclocking? And will I be able to get a certain amount of frequency out of the chip? Well, the quick answer to that is no, but it's not quite as straightforward as that. So let's go into a little bit of detail of the A320 chipset. Now the A320 chipset is designed as a budget alternative against the B450, the B550, X570s, all those kinds of things. It is at a certain price point. And the reason for that is because it is a limited chipset. It doesn't support overclocking officially for any processor, although some boards do allow limited overclocking of RAM frequencies, which is a very different thing. So let's take a example. So if you're buying, say for instance, a Ryzen 3 2200G, and you're planning to put it on an A320 motherboard, and you want to overclock it to get a little bit more out of it, simply, you can't. It cannot be done. There are no options in the motherboard box to allow you to do that. But if you want to get a little bit more performance out of it, you can buy faster RAM. And most motherboards, and I'll say that in inverted commas, some will allow you to overclock the RAM to allow the Ryzen 3 to run a little bit faster, especially with the integrated graphics. So essentially, short answer is the A320 chipset is not for overclocking. Also, the A320 chipset, because it is limited, has a very, very sparse VRM section and generally doesn't have any additional cooling on the VRMs or any of the chokes. So even if you could overclock on the board, you wouldn't get very far anyway. Now to put another context on this, the A320 boards generally do support precision boost overclocking, which is the automatic overclocking feature built into most AMD processors. You can still get boost clocks and sustained boosts in some cases, but you cannot manually change the overclocking settings. It is all done automatically for you based on thermals, temperatures, voltages, all those kinds of things. So hopefully that clears up some of the questions on the A320 chipset. Also, another thing to bear in mind, if you are looking at precision boost overclocking, you will possibly need a slightly beefier cooler. So using the stock cooler from AMD generally is okay for some of the lower end chips, again, Ryzen 3 2200G, 200G, that kind of thing. If you're moving up a little bit higher, maybe the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, or maybe a Ryzen 5 2600, like we've got here, then definitely if you want to get the most out of it, an additional cooler might be worth investing in. But having said that, you might be better off actually investing the money that you would have spent on a cooler, maybe 20 pounds or so, and actually upgrade into the next level of motherboard, which is the B450 chipset. AMD's B450 chipset, which was a replacement for the AMD B350 chipset, which for the first generation was absolutely fine, but for the second generation it needed extra features, etc. So the B450 came out. And the B450 was released at a very, very competitive price. Generally, like I said, anywhere between 10 to 15 to 20 pounds dearer than its A320 counterparts. And along with that, we've got extra features, unlocked BIOS, better feature sets, more slots, more fan headers, all those kinds of things. So if you're buying a moderate CPU or APU at the moment, and you want to overclock it or to get the most you possibly can out of it to increase your investment, then the B450 chipset is where you want to be looking. But this is where it gets complicated. So the B450 chipset, the chipset itself is generally universal, but the way it's implemented on the motherboards isn't. So you get some very budget end boards, B450s, such as the ASRock B450 HDV version four, which is a very cheap board, but is limited again with its VRMs 
and won't overclock particularly well. Again, it is really suited for Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5 processors pretty much at the most. You can actually install higher end processors than that, but your results will vary on how good you can actually get them to run and how far you can actually get any overclocks out of them. They are going to be running pretty much at their thermal limits. So moving up very, very slightly from the very low end B450 boards, you've got boards such as this. This is the ASRock B450 Pro 4. And this is almost identical to the Steel Legend board, both of which are super popular and for good reason. They have a slightly better VRM set, they've got slightly better chokes, and also they've got additional cooling on those VRMs. So for most modest processors, again, Ryzen 3s, Ryzen 5s, borderline into Ryzen 7s, you should get really good results from those kind of boards. You may need a little bit of additional cooling, but generally, I would say the B450 Pro 4 and the Steel Legend, for their price and for their flexibility and abilities, they are pretty much the go-to boards, especially at that price point. If you're considering a Ryzen 7 2700X or something along those lines, maybe one of the newer Ryzen 3000 series, really you're gonna be better off with something a little bit higher up the stack. They will take it, and if you look at the BIOS for pretty much all of these boards, they all list support for even Ryzen 9 CPUs, but again, they're not best suited to that particular platform. So let's move up a little bit further from the Pro 4 and the Steel Legend, and then we go into the next category. So we've got B450 boards, which are of a slightly more premium nature. So if you're using or planning to use Ryzen 7s, Ryzen 5 3600s, those kind of processors, these are going to be much better suited to you and also will give you that little bit extra of overclocking headroom. Now boards such as this, this is the Gigabyte B450 Gaming X, also boards like the Tomahawk, Tomahawk Max and the MSI Pro Carbon. These are fantastic boards and they do give you a lot of flexibility and also will take pretty much any AMD processor on the market and have a very good stab at overclocking it. So for these boards, anything really from a Ryzen 5 1600 or the 2600 or the Ryzen 5 3600 or even up to the 1700X or the 3700X, these boards are gonna be pretty good. Again, they will give you massive flexibility on the memory configurations you can use. You'll get certainly higher clocks, but you will be slightly limited towards that very top end, especially when it comes to supported RAM frequencies. This is partly down to the chipset and partly down to the CPUs themselves. So to round things off, this takes us up to the high end for AM4. So the high end at the moment is the X570, which is the top of the range. We've also got the B550, which weirdly doesn't follow in the 50 series kind of family traits, being a more budget orientated board. The new B550 boards are generally essentially X570 boards, just with slightly pared down features. Quite often, they will actually have a very similar, if not identical VRM set to their more expensive brethren, but they come in at slightly less price and lack similar features like PCI Express 4. So if that is important to you for data transfers and maybe you're looking at an SSD or NVMe drive which supports PCI Express 4, or maybe even a graphics card which supports it, then you might be better off still going with the X570 and spending maybe 20 to 30 pounds more. The X570 boards can be paired with any processor in the AMD platform, but also do bear in mind that all X570 boards are not produced equally. There are good ones and there are less good ones. Now, even the less good ones, something like the MSI X570-A Pro, which is the pretty much entry level board for the X570 chipset, still will do a pretty good job and will perform as good, if not better than pretty much every B450 motherboard. For the higher end chips, it will suffer due to slightly lacking VRMs. And again, it will get quite warm under certain conditions. But with that particular board, if you're looking at maybe a Ryzen 5 3600, 3700, you're gonna be absolutely fine. When you start going up to the heady heights of the Ryzen 9 series, that is when things start to get a little bit dicey and you wanna be thinking of a slightly higher end board. Something else to bear in mind is also, we will be getting newer 4000 series chips, which will be coming out shortly which will be supported on the B550 and X570 chipset, and possibly maybe on the B450, depending on beta biases and all that kind of thing. That is gonna be down to your manufacturer. So if you're gonna be asking me if a certain motherboard supports a certain 4000 series processor, unfortunately, as it stands at the moment, in uh, the end of June, 2020, nobody knows the real answer for that, at least not yet. But if you're looking for some form of future proofing, if that is even a thing these days, 
or you want to be able to maybe pick up an older processor at a later date and then really upgrade your rig. Something like the ASUS Tough board is a really, really good choice. It's relatively inexpensive in the market of X570 boards because you can spend considerably more money. You can pick these up now for around about 160, 170 pound mark, but this will be able to take maybe a used Ryzen 9 3950X in maybe a year's time and give you an absolutely fantastic platform. So if you're worried about spending a lot of money on a motherboard now and worried about your upgrade path, realistically, this is gonna see you good for a couple of years at least. That's my thoughts on it. So that pretty much wraps up the video. So now we've got a relatively good idea of what chips are suited towards which particular chipset and what can and cannot be overclocked. Obviously, the more expensive the board, generally, the better results you're gonna get. But having said that, you can still get some pretty fantastic results even with an entry level board if you're not expecting the earth and not expecting to do some stellar overclocking. So do let us know in the comment section what your opinions are. Am I on the mark? Have I uh, missed anything out? What are your results? Have you managed to overclock a really high end processor on a relatively low end board? What sort of speeds have you got? Please do let us know in the comment section. It's really interesting to hear what your particular results have been like and it's also useful for other viewers they can read through it and see what results we're getting obviously i haven't tested or used every board that's available so that kind of information is really really useful so please do leave your comments in the comment section below but in the meantime i've been mike this is mike's unboxing reviews and how to and hopefully we'll catch you in the next motherboard review thanks for watching